Hello everyone, this is Mamta Sharma from iChar Support Foundation and I am delighted to bring to you True Talks, another episode on a special interview series to answer questions about various aspects of life to help us take us to a deeper understanding of life itself. We have with us today Nitin Shah, founder and director of iChars and iChar Support Foundation. Welcome once again Nitin to this episode. Thank you Mamta, how are you doing? I am wonderful and welcome everyone else who is tuned in to this fourth episode of True Talks in which we are going to focus on love and acceptance from feeling to being. And I'm sure our audience Nitin is eagerly waiting to hear what you have to say on the subject. If anyone has any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. And you can also start a watch party on your FB accounts so that others can also watch it as we go along. So Nitin. In the first episode, when we were talking about happiness, we were talking about how sometimes, you know, even relationships may come in the way of our flow and happiness. So what do we do when we have issues in our relationships? How do we handle that? So, uh, Mamta, before we talk about how do we handle relationships, let's look at what are the reasons for conflict in a relationship, right? Yeah. And right now when I'm talking about conflicts in a relationship, I'm taking the example of romantic relationship between a husband and a wife or a a boyfriend and a girlfriend and so on and then we will perfect. probably also start looking at other relationships would that be okay yes perfect we can begin there perfect so the the thing is that in any relationship there are generally three reasons or three mm. areas of conflict okay uh, which we need to understand before we can work towards resolving those conflicts okay uh, the first area of conflict will be communication hmm second will be money hmm and third will be sex. All right. Right. Now, uh -huh. uh, when I say communication, communication will be at two levels. Hmm. One would just be the expression of love and the understanding of love because that also okay. needs to be expressed, right? Right. And then there is communication, which is in general hmm. about anything and everything else in our life. So which one would okay. you like me to focus on first? Communication related to uh, love or in general communication? I think we can begin with love. All right. So uh, when I talk about communication with respect to love, I am going to um, use a model by Gary Chapman called Five Love Languages okay. to okay. simply help you understand how different people express and understand love in different ways. All right. And many a times it's this lack of understanding between how we express love and how we understand love that can mm. create a lot of problems in our life. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, to understand this, think of our life as as an emotional tank hmm. okay. as long as the tank that we have is filled with love hmm. we many a times let our partners get away with anything and everything mm -hmm. right but when this tank starts depleting hmm. that's when we start having a problem make sense it does right and it starts creating a problem because when that love is depleting we want hmm. to feel love Hmm. But our partner at times is expressing love in a way in hmm. which we are not able to understand that. Okay. So Chapman says that there are five different languages in which you can express and understand love. And okay. these five languages would be one hmm. words of affirmation, mm -hmm. which means when I say someone, when I, when I tell someone, I love you, I'm there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking really good today. Mm -hmm. uh, you have made such nice food today. So basically mm -hmm. appreciating someone's actions or mm. someone's presence in your life mm. or you're literally expressing your love for them mm. based on words. Mm. Right. Perfect. Makes sense. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then the next one is mm. uh, physical touch. Mm -hmm. Right. Where you are mm. hugging someone, holding someone, you mm. are... Uh, uh, you are able to uh, to show your love physically to them okay so like holding hands right Will like that holding count? hands tapping on okay. shoulders mm -hmm. right now mm. the the thing is that for some people physical touch is very important mm -hmm. and for some people physical touch in front of other people becomes embarrassing mm. yes true 
and and you will actually notice people coming and telling you this that you know my partner behaves completely different from differently with me when they are by themselves or mm. when there is a group of people around me true true and and if the physical proximity changes depending upon whether you have people around you or not it mm. can make your partner feel very uncomfortable especially for them if physical mm. touch is an important love language Mm-hmm. And you're saying that the interpretation of physical touch can also be different uh, for both partners. Correct. So for some partners, uh, the fact that you hug them in front of other people, hmm. you hold their hand, they really like it. Hmm. For some people, they would do everything you want them to do when the two of you are together. But when hmm. they are in a group, oh, they want to maintain a arm's length distance from you. Right. Yes. Right. Um, hmm. Similarly, when we spoke about words, for some people, words hmm. hold a lot of value. They love being told "I love you." They hmm. love being appreciated verbally. Hmm. Right? And for hmm. some people, words are like, yeah, people keep saying a lot of things. They don't really value words as much. Hmm. Now imagine yes. if one partner uh, hmm. experiences love or understands love in terms of words, hmm. and the other partner does not understand it in terms of words. it hmm. will be a bit difficult for the two of them to communicate with each other wouldn't it be yeah absolutely and then the third one is hmm. quality time okay we are sitting and spending time with them hmm and you are not doing anything else the two of you are only focused on each other so if you are working on your computer they are working on uh, their computer then that's hmm. not really quality time hmm right true um, possible if one of you is working in the kitchen and another one of you is uh, playing video games on your phone then that's not quality time hmm it's something that you are doing with each other hmm right Correct. and you are not focusing on anything else hmm hmm so uh and then again for some people quality time can be but if there is nothing much of value that we are doing we are sitting with hmm. each other hmm it's like a waste of time true right yeah and the next one is acts of service okay so acts of service is where you are doing something for your partner hmm without being asked to do it hmm and without any expectations in return oh the last so bit was actually yeah. changed the meaning of the entire statement right so for example if um, if my partner asks me to make a cup of tea and i make it for her then that's not an act of service i'm doing it because she asked me to do it true if i tell her i'll make a cup of tea for you so that you can make a cup of cold coffee for me in the evening that's a bargain that's not act of service hmm right 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 so in act of service you are expecting hmm. someone to do something for you Mm. Uh, sorry you are doing something for someone without any expectations in return true uh and you will notice there are so many people in a relationship who would keep saying ki you you never do anything for me hmm right true. that is basically an indicator that they are looking for acts hmm they are literally that, saying you do not do anything right yeah yeah in fact if you were to listen to your partners your partners tell you a lot of things about what they are expecting and what they are looking for it's just that many times we are not listening properly mm. um so, and and the next one would then mm. be the last one which is gifts mm. now you you will notice some people who love receiving gifts and it's not just the value of the gift gift or the price mm-hmm. of the gift it is the fact that it's a surprise that it's been um uh it's been covered it's been gift wrapped the, mm. the air with which they will open the wrapper oh you have to mm. wait and watch it's like that expression is worth everything in fact people may go to even go to the extent of saving the wrapper itself yeah people save the wrappers people matlab there is a lot that they do with the wrapper and then on top of it what we fail to understand at times is that the wrapper many a times holds more value than the price of the gift mm true In the in 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 the sense, there are situations where you will uh, buy something for your partner, but mm. because your partner has asked, for example, I want to buy a gift for my partner. I mm. ask my partner, "Chal, chal, mujhe bata na, mujhe toko gift dilana hai. I have to buy a gift for mm. you. What gift would you want me to buy?" Mm. 
mm-hmm. and uh, they tell me what gift i buy it mm. i give it to them they would tell you that where is my gift mm. the fact that you have bought something that they were aware of doesn't account mm. for a gift for them hmm because i told you precisely so yes for, for people for whom gifts are important that surprise element is extremely extremely important mm. right correct makes sense right makes sense absolute sense <laughs> now so i'll give you a couple of examples to actually help you understand why this makes a lot of difference so see mm-hmm. as i said when we are happy in our life we are happy in our life none of this matters mm mm-hmm. the problem happens when we have a conflict going on in our life hmm right so for example i am a very very words person okay uh ms bond on the other hand which is my wife is not so much a words person hmm she is more of an acts person hmm right now when ms bond would have a problem with someone and if i would notice that she is not happy i would hmm. want her to feel happy right hmm so i would go and talk to her because words are important for me so i would go and tell her i love you i am there for you right and i thought this this would make her feel really happy mm. and she would tell me so what do i do about that mm and i am like this is unfair matlab ek to i don't get to hear i love you so often mm. and on top of it when i am saying it what i am listening to is what do i do how does that really mm. matter and i'm like that's not mm. fair so i asked her one day i said when you have when you are not in the right mood and i mm. come and tell you i love you i am saying it because i want you to feel better right mm. why does that make you feel uncomfortable why do you feel bothered by it or why does that irritate mm. you she says mm. because you are lying to me and i am thinking but i am not lying i really love you i i mean mm. right she said that's mm. not the point i know you love me that's the reason we are together otherwise we would not be together but the point is i am mm. having a problem with a set of people that you have never met now mm. you come and tell me i love you while i am in the middle of the problem my understanding mm. is you will help me resolve the problem hmm we'll forget in 15 minutes and then the problem will come back and haunt me so why do you mm. want to lie to me and i am thinking i never thought so far hmm right for me it was just saying it in the moment so that i can make you feel better so she says that's mm. the problem i am not looking for for your words i am looking for something that you can do to make my life easier Can hmm. you help me resolve the conflict? Hmm. I'm like, okay. So I asked her, what is your problem? When why hmm. can't you say I love you to me when I have a problem? And she would make a cup of tea. She will make cold coffee. She will she will pack my bags if I have to go somewhere. But she would not say I love you. And I'm like, but how difficult is it to say I love you? And she would tell me, Nitin, I have left my family for you. I'm with you hmm. right now. Right? Hmm. Ab isse zada kya I love you? so and i'm thinking but how difficult is it to say it she says but that's not the point again you have a problem with people that i may not be knowing so how mm. do i help you resolve those problem mm. so i don't want to say i love you too because in my understanding in that moment what i am saying is i'm going to help you resolve a problem which which i can't true so i had to tell her this that misba for me when you tell me i love you i feel good my problem i can resolve it i don't need someone else to help me resolve it i just mm. want you to hear this so that it makes me feel comfortable hmm but we are we are you saying that if i tell you i love you when you have a problem that doesn't mean that i have to actually go out and help you resolve the problem i said no hmm. you don't have to. you just have to say i love you to me she said brilliant then i can say that to you hmm right? so it's literally like language right correct it's literally like language it's like if uh, matlab it's literally like one partner is speaking in french and another is speaking in german and the two people don't understand each other's language true Right. True. So today now it becomes a lot more easier because I know for her acts are important. She knows mm. for me words are important. When I am in a in in a situation where I am not happy about something, she mm. knows what she needs to do is just tell me I love you, to sit with me and appreciate certain things about me in mm. words. Hmm. And I know that all I have to do is probably make a cup of tea or a cold coffee, and that should be good enough. Hmm. True. this actually uh, nitin we were talking about expectations and communication yesterday uh when we were talking about how unfulfilled uh, you know uh, expectations can create anger right correct so, so we can look at it in this manner yeah we can so here we are literally talking about that at times our expectations are there 
and it's not mm-hmm. that our partner is not fulfilling the expectation they are trying to fulfill the expectation mm-hmm. but they are just trying to fulfill it in a way in which we are not able to understand it mm. true right and which right. is basically a bigger problem because both partners at the end of the day end up feeling that i love my partner i am doing mm. everything that i can but yet it's not enough because mm. in their head they are doing the best that they can if i did not know that misbah prefers acts of service i mm. would keep wondering that what else can i can i do in a day 10 times that i am telling her i love you and that's not enough mm. Mm. and if she did not realize words are important for me she could make keep making food and coffee and tea and packing my bags and um, ensuring everything in the organization is running smoothly but i would mm. not feel love because for me that's not equal to love mm. correct true 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 and nitin this can apply to other things also so for example i have a friend uh, so mm-hmm. uh, both the partners are my friends and mm-hmm. one person keeps saying that the other one doesn't res- i don't feel respected mm-hmm. and the other partner says that what else can i do to make you feel respected so is it that probably they are communicating that respect also in a different manner there is a possibility so that's actually one of the things that when we talk about expectation settings with our partners mm-hmm. uh, including what we spoke about right now like expression of love it's a good mm. idea for you to sit with the partner talk to them and understand from them what are they mm. really expecting from you and it's a good idea for you to share your expectations from your to your partners matlab one of the one of the things that i hear a lot of people saying is do i even need to say this much yes shouldn't my partner yeah. understand this so what we fail yeah. to recognize is sadly your partner doesn't know how to read your mind and i don't really think that's a bad thing it's actually a good thing that your partner doesn't know how to read your mind <laughs> yes <laughs> right so if if they don't know how to read your mind then the only way you can do the expectation setting rightly or correctly hmm. is hmm. by actually sitting and having a conversation and how difficult would it be to have sit and have a conversation with each other hmm and this is the reason why at times relationship counseling or coaching can be very effective because it that relationship counselor or coach provides you with an opportunity to talk about things that you feel so you take so for granted that you have not even discussed it yeah like yesterday i was saying that uh, aren't there like universal principles but then you said that if there were then there wouldn't be any problem because you would understand each other perfectly correct right right so that so i think that's a brilliant thing yeah so that's one of the things to keep in mind that it's a good idea for you to be able to ex- to explain to each other Hmm. what you expect from each other for hmm. now we are talking about expression of love in terms of love and use high love languages as a reference point because it's a it's a pretty comprehensive reference point also obviously we all don't have one love languages we all have all five love languages but our priorities vary so you just need to be able to understand which love language does your partner value the most hmm. and is it and possible do- for this sorry is it mm-hmm. possible for the same person to so for example can i have a different love language when it comes to my say husband and when it comes to my child you may but that's rare okay okay but love language may change from time to time so it may so happen that in my current scenario overall i prefer to listen to words more and then after 5 mm. years i may prefer service more so that may change but it's okay. generally more consistent during the time frame all right okay which is one second uh, obviously the key question then is how do we identify what the love language is yeah exactly right yeah so um, there are a couple of ways one is just hmm. listen to your partner your partner hmm. tells you what their love language is when your partner comes and says you don't tell me how much you appreciate me hmm you never so tell me how much i appreciate you yes right so that right. they are looking for words right right so they are like looking verbal... for words hmm fair enough uh, then if a partner comes and tells you that uh uh that you behave differently with me in front of other people you are not hmm. close to me i can hmm. i can notice that physical distance between us hmm okay why can't you hold me in front of other people hmm physical touch 
Hmm. Right? When a partner right. says, uh, why don't you spend time with me? Hmm. What would that be? Quality time. Obviously. Now, the thing with quality time is, no, your partner doesn't expect you to spend 24 hours with them. Okay? True. They probably will not be able to tolerate you more than 10-15 minutes at a stretch. True. Uh, true. true. What they expect is, undiluted, undisputed time of probably 10-15 minutes. Hmm. And if you can give them those 10-15 minutes, you will be hmm. surprised how your entire day, day goes far more smoothly. It's it's like if, so for example, between me and Ms. Basu, for her, apart from acts, quality time hmm. is the second most important thing that's important for her. Right? Hmm. And hmm. I know she, if I sit with her for more than 10-15 minutes without doing anything, she can't she doesn't know what to do with me, right? But she needs those 10-15 minutes. And it makes complete sense for me because the moment I give her those 10-15 minutes in a day, the balance hmm. 23 hours, 45 minutes go really smoothly for me. It's it's just logical sense to give her those 15 minutes. Absolutely. Right? So hmm. that's quality time. Then there are places where your partner would tell you, you never do anything for me. Hmm. Okay. Ask them, what would you want me to do? Hmm. Not right now, because if they tell you, Abhi mere liye karo, and you end up doing it, then, then that's that not is... a Because they're expecting something. Correct. So what you need to do is carry on a conversation with them where in your like little book, you're making a note that, all right, this is the thing that she would or he would want me to do. And then you hmm. do it for them at places at times where they are not expecting it, where they are not asking you to do it. Hmm. Right? True. For example, this current situation where, where we are under a lockdown or self-isolation is such hmm. a brilliant opportunity for us to be able to understand each other's love languages and actually work with each other in a way in which we can improve the relationship. Hmm. But if we don't understand this well, these mm. few days can literally mm. become the final nail in the coffin of our relationship. Mm. Right. And as you're saying this, I'm just looking for examples around me. And I don't think I can recall any in which both partners love language is same. Most of them seem to be different. Both the partners. Generally, it's different. It's unlikely that both of them will have the same love language, but then you never know. See, if they mm. have, that's good for them. But hmm. if they don't, then it still makes sense to be able to communicate with each other and understand the love language, which is one. Hmm. And uh, second, love languages can change over a period of time, right? Hmm. Mm-hmm. So even if you start with the same love language over a period of time, things may change. Hmm. So the key is observation, is it? Key is observation. And the last one that's left is gifts. So when your partner comes and says, hmm. you never buy anything for me, you never give me a gift, you never surprise hmm. me. So the moment they hmm. talk about you never surprise me, you understand that they're talking about gifts. Hmm. And please True. gift wrap the gift. That's important. Hmm. And keep it a surprise. <laughs> and keep it a surprise. <laughs> Wonderful. Right? That sounds so, so logical, way... Nitin, when you're describing it. <laughs> so one way is that, which is, uh, listening, which is listening to your partner's complaint. Second is hmm. literally sit and talk to them, explain to them that these are the five love languages that I've understood. This is my love language. Can you tell me what makes you feel comfortable? Mm. Yeah, makes sense. But you can always also, um, uh, there's a website called Five Love Languages, Gary Chapman's. They have a questionnaire online. You can literally Mm -hmm. go fill up that questionnaire and understand what your love language is and what your partner's love language is. Oh, and you can turn it into a game between you and your partner. So you can find each other's love language. While we are all waiting uh, for the lockdown to end. Correct. And in fact, there are also now uh, uh, these quick quizzes on the Five Love Languages website for love language for your children, for your parents. So you can kind of expand this model to all of them. Wow. That's so interesting. Brilliant. Brilliant way of... I think a lot of problems would kind of, you know, get resolved so easily, uh, which otherwise sound so big. Yeah, so in my coaching sessions, I've noticed that when people come for relationship issues, many a times this explanation of love languages, they look at each other like we we have realized where we were going wrong. Hmm. Obviously, because you live with them for so long, you, I mean, the moment you have the understanding, 
you can immediately put your finger on the real issue got it perfect that's brilliant nitin but so this is communication when it comes to love right got it what about other things like communication in general can we talk some more about it sure so when it comes to communication in general hmm. we basically break it down into two components hmm. one will be the way we receive and interpret information hmm and second is how we give out information okay okay and what i'm going to explain now actually comes hmm. from uh, a model in hypnosis where hmm. it's about understanding people so that you can guide them in a hypnotic state more effectively but the same understanding is very very useful when it comes to relationships and communication okay, okay. suggestibility right you said correct so the first thing is suggestibility which is how we receive and interpret information and mm. when we talk about receive and interpret information uh, mm. there are two ways in which we can receive and interpret information mm. the first is literal and inferential mm. okay. now when i say literal what comes to your mind so because we are talking about communication uh, mm. when you interpret things literally when you interpret things literally correct so which means the the moment i say something to you and you are mm. taking what i am saying at its face value hmm uh so if i tell you you are looking good today hmm and you take it at face value and you feel good about it hmm so that's literal right even if i say correct. it sarcastically and you will notice there are places where you come across people you will sarcastically tell them that you are looking so good today and hmm. they don't understand the sarcasm they literally look at you and they tell you thank you that may oh, that you a lot that they have not correct so at times people can oh. be very literal where what you have said is what they have understood okay right think of it and basically they are not reading between lines they are not trying to analyze things okay, okay. and second is inferential where you will notice there are certain people who have a tendency to read between lines so even if you genuinely mean it and you tell someone i'm good today they hmm. are asking you tell me what work do you have Hmm. Right. So while you are hmm. saying something, their understanding of what you are saying is very different. Hmm. Hmm. And that's being inferential. Oh. So they are always reading between the lines, is what you are saying. No. So the idea is that people in different situations, under different hmm. different circumstances, may be literal or inferential. And the same person in one situation oh. may be literal, in another situation can be inferential. but generally with specific people in their life when you think of it from a area point of view hmm. uh so let me explain it this way so hmm. for a literal a person would be more literal when they are having a conversation with someone that they completely trust hmm the conversation about is about a topic that they are not interested in okay and or they are mentally exhausted which means for example hmm. i trust my partner completely Hmm. i have no interest in matters related to kitchen hmm okay. so when mizwa tells me nitin uh do something in the kitchen so let's say she tells me um uh, wash that plate hmm i'll wash the plate that she has pointed to hmm. i would not really apply my mind in terms of thinking ki baki ke bartan bhi saaf karne yeah a lot of people can relate to that i'm sure Okay. For example, again, keep milk in the refrigerator. So I'll keep milk. I would not remember to actually keep vegetables and everything because I was never told that. Hmm. Hmm. So I trust her, hmm. and I have no interest in the area where we are having a conversation. Therefore, hmm. it's easier for me. The idea is you will tell me exactly what you need. Hmm. This will happen a lot of times with kids, where you will notice you will ask a child that you know fold the clothes. Hmm. and the child will fold it and keep it exactly where they were kept and then the parents are like why did you not keep it in the cupboard and the child is like but you never asked me to keep it in the cupboard hmm true i can totally totally relate to that correct and and then parents start thinking that the child is trying to play too smart the child is not playing too smart the child just trusts you a lot or we I'm tell them ki tumko to karna hi nahi hai you are just not interested in doing it so for example my daughter tells me to get something and i'll tell her top drawer mein hai Uh-huh. and then it's not in the top drawer probably it's in the second drawer and she'll say uh, and i'll say ye to hai and then she'll say but you said top drawer how am i supposed to know that i have to 
check in the second one also you clearly said top drawer correct and and that's important for us to understand because otherwise what happens is uh hmm. so for literals for example one of the things that they complain a lot is hmm. what that i do what i'm being asked to do and hmm. yet i get to hear from people around me hmm because hmm. in their head whatever you have told them they are doing it right hmm correct correct i'm sure you can think of other examples like this where you say yeah. something to someone people take it at its face value correct correct so for example uh, my domestic help she is another person who is very literal so for example if i'm telling her to chop vegetables for the next meal and i go and find that the onion garlic so the other things have not been done the main vegetable has been chopped and if i ask her she said but you told me to do whatever that vegetable was say cabbage potatoes whatever you never know but for me it's so obvious because onion and garlic has to go into it so when you are prepping aren't you supposed to know that onion and garlic has to be done and it is done every day correct but in their head that's not what they are thinking for them they are thinking what i did what you asked me to do ha huh. yet you are angry with me correct oh my god <laughs> right and uh, so that those are all examples of literal right hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. now inferential would be where people read between lines and generally people will read between lines under these circumstances either mm-hmm. they don't trust the person mm-hmm. okay so for example if my friend who i completely trust comes and tells me let's do something together mm-hmm. i don't think i'm going to think twice mm-hmm. i at least i'm not going to read between lines and try to understand what is it that they are trying to get from this mm-hmm. but if someone that i completely mistress comes mm. and tells me that nitin let's go together somewhere the chances mm. that i want to analyze and read between lines and think that everything is at its place or not whether i'm safe or not will be very high why because mm. trust becomes a major point of concern second True. is the area of interest so like mm. i said with nizwa i trust her completely mm. but in matters related to kitchen because i am not interested in kitchen mm. i do exactly what she wants me to do or what she says she wants hmm. me to do right hmm. uh but when it comes to training when it comes to hypnosis when it hmm. comes to coaching and therapy these hmm. are areas of interest for me hmm. high areas of interest hmm right now in these hmm. areas when she comes and talks to me because i'm hmm. interested i want to i want to understand it from every possible angle hmm and that's the reason why i would hear read between lines so when it comes to matters mm-hmm. related to my areas of interest especially training mm-hmm. and coaching and therapy it's mm-hmm. it will be difficult for you to find someone who is more inferential than i am okay right i get so it it's not yes. that i am literal or i am inferential i am mm-hmm. literal or i am inferential with respect to certain people in certain situations hmm right and mm-hmm. finally the mental exhaustion that even mm-hmm. if so for example even if so i trust miswa completely she comes mm. and talks to me about hypnosis and all of these things i'm very mm. interested in it but i'm mm. i'm let's say very busy with something that i need to do and i need to complete immediately hmm so i'm mentally tied up hmm now in order to infer i have to read between lines hmm because i'm mentally tied up i may again move towards being literal and i may tell acha tu kar lena tere ko jo bhi karna hai just do what you want to do because i trust you that you know this quite well Hmm. True. Right. Correct. So that becomes the third scenario that it will either be it will be a combination of trust, hmm. uh, interest, and mental mm-hmm. exhaustion. Hmm. And now imagine mm-hmm. if there are two people in a relationship who, in one area, so for example, between me and Ms. Ba, if let's say mm-hmm. I am very literal in kitchen and she expects me to understand and read between lines. Hmm. it comes to kitchen hmm. and if she is very literal in terms of training and therapy and i expect her to read between lines over there our communication hmm. is surely going to go for a top hmm hmm right nitin yeah. but isn't it too many things to remember is it possible hmm. to uh, so we were talking about the love languages correct now we are talking about how people can interpret what you are saying to them 
in a different manner. So while this makes perfect logical sense, but we are also saying that the same person may interpret information differently in different situations and with different people, right? Correct. Correct. So um, you are telling me to remember all of that. No, I'm not to asking you to what? remember all of that. I'm asking huh. you to observe all of that when it's happening all in front of you. See, so the idea is okay. very simple. Okay. Uh, eventually, whether you're communicating clearly or not can be observed in the hmm. situation that you're in. If you said something and your partner did exactly what you wanted them to do. Hmm. And they have, that means they've understood what you wanted them to do. Hmm. So the communication was effective. Hmm. If they have not been able to do what you expected them to do, hmm. which basically tells you your communication was not effective. So ask them to do it in a different way. Right. So you need to See, check wherever it is not happening right in your life, right? Correct. And that's the place where you can do a course correction immediately. So think of it this way. So I said about kitchen, right? So let's say Milba hmm. asks me to put milk in refrigerator. I put it in refrigerator. And then she hmm. looks at me and she's like, Saman fridge mein kyun nahi rakha? And I'm hmm. like, to the adud fridge mein. And then hmm. she says, ye bhi samjhana padega. Now I actually don't know what's happening. Hmm. Correct. Right? But the moment yeah. she notices that I have kept the milk in refrigerator, but I have not kept other things. Shouldn't hmm. this in itself tell her that I only hmm. understood what she asked me to do specifically? Hmm. So rather than telling me, do I even need to tell you all of this? Instead of that, if she just tells me that Nitin, when I tell you milk, I hmm. don't just mean milk. I mean all the things which hmm. can get spoiled when they are not kept in the refrigerator. Hmm. Now I'm True. being told very clearly and specifically what needs to be done. And if it was the literal person interpreting this incident or thinking about it? So there is a possibility that the moment you ask them to keep milk in refrigerator and let's say you only wanted them to keep milk in refrigerator because mm. you were thinking of making food after some time because they don't know mm. that you're thinking of making food after some time. They may mm. also keep all the, all the vegetables and the other things inside the fridge. Hmm. Right? No, I'm so saying if mm. I am the literal partner, mm. so I was told to keep things in the fridge. Correct. I kept the milk, hmm. yet I got scolded. Hmm. Now I'm the one who's looking at where this communication went wrong. So, so what I do I do? Ask. Correct. So hmm. wait, what you do is you will tell them exactly this, that I did exactly what you wanted me to do. Hmm. Right. But that's, hmm. it seems that was not what you meant. Right. Right. So can you just Correct. clarify and let me know what it means? Right. So basically talk about it. Correct. Talk about it. But when we talk about literal and inferential, we are actually hmm. giving you a guideline to understand where things can go wrong. Hmm. So to be able to communicate clearly also becomes easier because it gives you a greater understanding of your partner. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's like very logical. <laughs> okay. So Okay, so this is about how we receive, uh, how we interpret what is being said. Yeah, sorry, you're saying. Correct. So I was saying, so just to clarify, what we are talking about in terms of literal and inferential is not how you give out information. It's about how you're receiving information, how your partner is receiving right. information. Right. Giving out information is a completely different ball game altogether. Hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, that is what I was going to ask you about. So what about when I am sending out some communication? So when I am saying something or my partner is hmm. right. So what so about the, that? Correct. So then when we talk about things related to uh, giving out information, it's hmm. important to understand that giving out information can be done in multiple ways. Some partners are more expressive in the way they talk. Hmm. And some partners, uh, well, they like to keep it short and crisp. They will only say what is required. Hmm. Is that right. like extroverts and introverts? To a large extent, yes. Okay. That will be the okay. easier way of understanding it. That okay. uh, some partners are more extrovert. They love hmm. expressing a lot. They love talking a lot. At times, they talk a lot more than what is required to be spoken about. <laughs> right. 
and then there are people who don't like talking a lot especially in mm. front of other people so in a mm. one to one situation if you sit with them if you have a conversation with them they may still give you some more details some more not a lot more mm. but some more details uh, but if if you are looking at it in terms of their expression in front of other people hmm they may just want to be left alone hmm hmm right which is one hmm. and uh, second is also that the way they behavior is because when we talk about giving out information giving hmm. out information is not just through words it's about a lot hmm. of other things in terms of your behavior right and hmm. to that extent extrovert and introvert makes complete sense that generally one partner ends up being hmm. more extrovert and one partner ends up being more introvert in a relationship and that's okay. where relationship and communication both can actually go for a bit of a toss okay can you explain so when we talk about uh, extrovert and introvert i'm going to kind of break it down into smaller um, what should i say smaller traits and small smaller behavioral uh, behaviors that are observable right. right so you will notice one partner loves hmm. attention hmm and another partner prefers space hmm right so when one hmm. partner loves attention whenever there hmm. is a problem hmm. okay they would want their partner to pay attention to them they want the partner to sit with them talk to them matlab like even if they have no idea what the discussion is about it's not important what the discussion is about it's important that we are discussing something right Right? right so that's generally for the extrovert for the introvert the idea is you know what let me sit let me think what i have to tell you and then i'll come back and talk to you hmm and probably i would talk to you means i'll probably give you two sentences which in which i think you will be able to understand what i mean or i expect and you to understand what i mean and the extrovert maybe aise kaise ho sakta hai abhi humne baat to ki nahi hai is bare mein correct matlab for extrovert it's like abhi to baat shuru bhi nahi hui hai abhi to hume discuss karna hai right correct <laughs> so many a times in a relationship you will notice this is a conflict that one partner says that my partner just doesn't talk hmm. and the other partner says my partner just doesn't stops <laughs> i can totally relate to that <laughs> perfect yes right yes and uh, yes. so the other bit is when there is a conflict hmm. in the middle of a conflict matlab well, while the hmm. conflict is ongoing the hmm. extrovert wants to be able to sit and discuss the things hmm and the introvert would want to do something so that they can think about it and in that moment the extrovert can feel extremely rejected because the idea is even while we are having a fight hmm you think something else is more important the introvert may still go and think about the problem but they don't say it so much right so they will just say that we'll talk about this later what they are basically trying to say what the introvert is trying to say is let me hmm. think about it then i'll come back and i'll discuss this with you but because they don't say so much and they just directly end up saying that we'll talk about this later the hmm. impression that the extrovert ends up getting hmm is that you have something else more important than this which can make the extrovert feel even more rejected and the hmm. many a times the problem with people who love saying a lot talking a lot hmm. when they are there is a conflict is that hmm. they can end up feeling rejected very quickly hmm and the moment the extrovert feels rejected god mm. bless the introvert <laughs> they are going to turn the whole world upside down right yeah they are going to turn the whole world upside down wherever you go we follow and because the introvert requires space hmm the more the extrovert tries to resolve the problem the more the introvert feels that my space is being taken away from me and the more they try to run away from the extrovert hmm And so they're result, still looking for attention the one who was looking for attention is still looking for even more attention and getting even less correct and the oh one who is looking God. for space is still looking for space but getting even less because the other partner is just not leaving them so how will this be resolved so this is like a dilemma right this is a classic paradox it is and the way to deal with this is one to actually understand that your partner when they when they say something to you you have to understand what is the reason because of which they are saying it and if you are not sure what the reason is talk to them ask them so when your partner says uh, we'll talk about this later on hmm okay ask hmm. them all right after how much time hmm 
So rather than jumping to a conclusion that the, this conversation is not important for your partner, and your partner is trying to avoid the conversation, which hmm. is what many a times a lot of people who like to discuss things in that moment itself end up doing. So hmm. ask the partner. Understand that your partner needs some time to think over it. They are not rejecting you. Hmm. They are just asking for space and time to think over it. So ask them when can we talk about it again. And if you are someone who is an introvert who likes to get more time. then mm. don't tell your partner that we'll talk about this later because that can immediately make them feel rejected tell them i understand that there is something that we need to discuss mm. i need some time to be able to think over it mm. in this much time i'll surely come back and discuss this with you so clarify to them more clearly mm. true makes complete sense yeah right Absolutely. then the other then the other area of conflict with this same thing between extrovert and introvert becomes hmm. that as i said introverts would want to think about things so they don't compromise on one thing which is thinking before talking hmm. they would want to think before they talk that's important for them hmm for a lot of extroverts they hmm. think while they are talking hmm and many a times they end up saying certain things that they don't really mean but they still end up saying it hmm and hmm. that's the place where they end up they later on realize uh, well we we should not have said this but in that moment they still end up saying it and then the problem with that is when they say something like this hmm. the introvert can feel judged and like i said ex- the extroverts would hate rejection they find it very difficult to handle rejection The hmm. introvert really hate judgment. Ah, hmm, hmm. Okay. And the moment they feel judged, after that they can hmm. completely close down. And the thing with introverts is they can really give you a silent treatment. Like they cannot talk to you for months. Hmm. Right. right. And and right. that can literally <coughs> make the extrovert's head explode. that how can a person not talk to me for a month hmm absolutely absolutely and so what is the key to this uh, problem so how do you solve it you as communicate said, correct as i said the key to this problem is you not only communicate you understand each other's communication so it's important for you to be able to notice your partner and hmm. check in relationship to you hmm what is your partner so remember when i say introvert and extrovert here we are not hmm. going by classical definitions of introvert and extrovert these words are only hmm. being used as an hmm. expression to give you an overall dynamics of how their behavior is in the relationship one person hmm. can be extrovert in one relationship and introvert in another relationship i'm sorry i'm sorry okay so what you have to see is with respect to you hmm what role is your partner playing in the relationship if you are the more extrovert one you will mm-hmm. notice your partner naturally ends up becoming the more introvert one oh and if you are the more introvert one you will mm-hmm. notice your partner naturally becomes more extrovert one because technically we are trying that there, there is a sense of balance that is being worked upon mm-hmm. that that they are trying to achieve mm-hmm. and that sense of balance also becomes a primary reason for problems mm-hmm. so by that logic nitin would it be like uh, if if the in the relationship both partners were similar mm-hmm. would those be uh, more uh, like will that be a more effective uh, relationship or like a better relationship in some way if they were both no, extroverts or both introverts not necessary because when they are both extroverts both of them want to talk no one wants to listen how would you resolve the challenge oh yes and if both of them are introverts then both of them want to let matlab both of, neither of them are willing to really talk so if they are not really willing to talk then how would you really address that situation so despite the different needs and different expectations uh different partners seem to be you know yeah, see at the end technically it doesn't really matter whether you are similar to your partner or you are different from your partner what really matters is whether you and your partner understands each other better or not and if you do right. understand each other better you would realize there are always ways of getting things worked upon 
right mm. and that's why we are discussing all of this the idea of discussing this is not to tell you that you and your partner are different and therefore you can never come to a common understanding the mm. idea of sharing this is to help you understand that you and your partner are different and yet you mm. can understand each other and mm. once you understand each other mm. you have the ability to to actually improve your relationship and take it to the place where you would like to take it mm. correct that right makes like complete sense yeah and what i'm talking about in terms of behavior right now is just a tip of the iceberg matlab there are a lot more traits that you can actually understand if any mm. of you are interested maybe just search up on uh, uh, a book called sexuality uh, the p and e factor p yeah. and by, e correct okay it's by john capus it explains the idea of sexuality quite effectively and if you are someone who's more interested in videos then on the icha website there's an online course called ultimate guide to love dating and relationship that covers this topic of sexuality like in in detail in terms of going into how our behaviors vary when we are in a public setting setting why we get attracted towards each other uh, mm. a lot of these things are discussed over there okay wonderful wonderful i and i uh, anyone who is listening uh, the website is www. i c h a r s i charge dot com right Nitin perfect perfect so that 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 makes complete sense Nitin but are these the only reasons for conflict in a relationship no so like we said that there are three reasons one was communication that's what we have discussed more or less mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there is money so mm-hmm. in a relationship generally lack of money doesn't create a problem the okay. problem gets created when the partner mm. feels my partner has money ha huh? but is not willing to spend on me okay right and that's where the understanding of how people spend comes into play generally mm. one partner has a tendency to spend on how they feel okay and the other partner has a tendency to spend based on value for money so okay. think of it this way you will notice that generally so there are certain people who spend for brands they know i can get the same features the same quality at a far lesser price if we if i go for non branded stuff hmm but they would still pay for the brand because it's more about the brand makes me feel better you know when people see that brand in my hand they would pay attention to me so it's not hmm. about whether it's value for money or not it's more about hmm. how does that expenditure make me feel mm. yes where whereas there are certain people who will mm. actually pay based on value for money they may have like loads and loads of money with them mm. but they will only pay if every penny gives them the money's worth mm. so you will notice people who are who may be ceos and man- and like top managers in multinational mm. companies but when you travel mm. in a flight they may still travel in a second class or a economic class in fact a few days ago there was this uh, anecdote on social media in which they said that narayan murthy was traveling in economy class and somebody asked them exactly this example that you are stating uh, and mm-hmm. they said why aren't you in a business class sir and he said will that help you reach faster perfect so and that's exactly the point that for them it's the value for money that mm. what is the point of me going there earlier mm. if i'm sorry me spending more money if it's going to take the same amount of time at the mm. same time if the same person realizes that in the first class there's mm. someone who's sitting who can help me uh, crack a major deal hmm they may still they go for the first class ah right okay. because there's value for money over there hmm perfect for people who spend for feelings if they have the money and at times mm. even if they don't have the money mm. the idea oh when i sit in the first class people will look at me they will notice you are he sitting in the first class hmm. and they need so not, not even know the person they could be total strangers yeah it doesn't really matter <laughs> that is not so interesting yeah. if these two people are in a relationship Hmm. So oh my god who loves spending for feelings wants to buy a mobile phone hmm they would want to buy a premier branded phone maybe let's the say best. iphone hmm 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 right and if their partner is a value for money person hmm. they may have a lot of money but the moment you hmm. say i want to buy an iphone they would ask uh, what would be your usage hmm 
Can you explain the usage to them and what are the features you are looking for? You explain the features to them and say, "Hey, this is actually available in um, what Micromax also." Hmm. So why would you want to spend so much money on this phone when you can get the same set of features at one hmm. third or one fourth the price? Hmm. But the same person may buy their child the latest model of iPad, thinking that will help the child in the studies, right? Am I Correct. getting it right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the idea is that they have to see value for money over there, mm. right? Mm. And the problem with this conflict is not only value for money and value for feeling. The problem mm. is we don't, we are not able to communicate this to each other. I know. Of, so for example, I had a couple coming for a session, and one of their conflicts was this about mobile phone that you know my partner has money but is not willing to spend on me. And the mm. partner says, "But I am not sure why are you spending like," and she wanted to buy a mobile phone worth around eighty eighty five thousand, but mm. probably more. This is like four years back. Hmm. So he says, "I'm not sure. Why do you want to buy an eighty-five thousand worth phone? What feature would you get in it that hmm. you're not getting in a twenty-five thousand phone? When all you're going to do is make calls and text each other. That's all. Correct. And, and <laughs> she said, and she said, but I am doing. You know, because there are additional features available in that phone. So hmm. still, hmm. she is trying to convince him on features. And this guy's value for money. He has studied the features in now in in and out." Hmm. Even he actually, मतलब we actually had to sit and ask her that all right, so these are the features you're looking for, right? These features hmm. are also available in the other phone. Why this particular phone? Hmm. And then she said, "Yar, people will ask me, 'Tune itta mehenga phone kari da hai.' Hmm. Imagine the attention that I'll get, the the feelings that are associated with that that I'm owning this phone. Hmm. I'm the first hmm. one. I'm one of the first ones to own this phone." So mm. and that the partner realized, and the partner says, "So tell me you want to spend because it will make you feel good. Don't tell me features because you are not buying it for features." And they'll see sense in it if uh, the other partner says that I am buying it because it will make me feel good. They will get it that logic. The chances buying it for you because that they understand it. It makes sense that yes, you are looking for feelings, you are looking for attention, and that attention will not be possible if you. Mm. Buy no, the cheaper phone. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. That's, that's the second part of it, which is money. Uh huh. And the third part of it is sex. Hmm. hmm. Now, hmm. generally speaking, between the two hmm. partners, hmm. Uh, one partner, when there is a when the problem is related to sex, one partner hmm. has a greater need for sex, and the other partner has a lesser need for sex. Hmm. and at times that understanding is also not very clear for us okay right so mm -hmm. what we mean by this is that uh, there is a possibility that between the two partners mm -hmm. one partner would want to have sex on a daily basis because mm -hmm. their, their their body requires or their body feels more comfortable with that level of sex okay plus more importantly for them sex is equal to love so whenever they want to feel loved mm. it's, it's easier for them to have, get into that physical intimate action with their partner so that they can experience mm. that sense of love correct but for some other people sex is not equal to love and their body doesn't really have that much need for sex so now what happens is because the second partner has a lesser need for sex when the first partner approaches them and if they're not in the mood they will end up saying no hmm and when they say no the first partner can again feel rejected and rejection while they want to have intimate experience hmm can be very very difficult to overcome ah yeah right as an hmm. extension of that you will notice that there are so especially in coaching and therapy i actually had people coming in saying that you know once my partner has has sex with me then they would literally turn around and go off to sleep as if i don't mean anything now hmm 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 It yeah. makes me feel so unused. It it makes me feel so used. Used, yeah, yeah. I have heard that. Yes, right? but in reality, for them, physical proximity is it's too. They can't handle too much of physical proximity. They've just had sex with their partner, which means there's already too much of it. After that, they need their space. So because they need their space, they just want to turn around and go off to sleep, or they want to go out and have a smoke, or they will go back to their work. they are not doing it because they don't care for you they are doing it because their requirement is different they now need space there is too much of physical proximity that they are not able to handle hmm. 
Right. And imagine if these two people are in a relationship with each other. Hmm. 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 A lot of marriages don't get consummated for years because of this reason. That on the first night, one partner felt sleepy and decided to sleep, and the second partner felt rejected. That hmm. even on in the first night, my partner did not want to be in an intimate interaction with me. Hmm. And after that, they are just not able to. Right. Right. Yeah, in men, sense. this could in men rejection during the act of sex hmm. could become the primary reason for uh, erectile dysfunction, psychological wow. erectile dysfunction. Yeah, makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. So this is mm-hmm. about sex. So in overall, there are these three things that mm-hmm. would play a major role in terms of a relationship: communication, mm-hmm. money, and sex. Obviously, sex would be involved in terms of romantic relationship or platonic relationship. But in all mm. other relationships, for example, your friends and your family members and mm. your colleagues mm. and so on, the mm. communication and the money part still plays an important role. Still applies, right? Correct. Wow, that that was some like really brilliant insights there, Nitin. I'm sure everyone who is listening can you know very quickly relate to uh, whatever is being said, and you know they can see how they can make use of all this that we are talking about. And also you said this- that. I'm sorry. Also, just before we go, ahead, sorry. Uh, just for all of you who are watching this or listening to this, that I understand that we are discussing a lot of these things over um, us. So there are things that you may feel you're missing out on. If you are yeah. interested, I would really recommend check out the books that I've referred that I've spoken to you about, or yeah. you can also uh, check out the online model on the IHS website because that covers all of this and a lot more in detail. But that's because. uh there are videos there are demonstrations so there are a lot of lot more things that you can learn from that but if you're looking for an introduction and if you're looking at a way to be able to improve your relationship from here onwards i think what we are discussing right now is quite comprehensive absolutely i'm sure you've given us a lot of food for thought uh for today and later as well okay and you're also saying that uh, the key to you know resolving this is to listen to what your partner is telling you right which is one and second to also sit down with your partner and have a proper expectation setting uh maybe b- before you get into commitment during the phase of commitment and even when you are having conflicts mhm mhm and it will even work when two partners have been in a relationship for a long time say 10 years of marriage or so it is applicable yeah. to everybody okay. it is applicable to everybody because our expectations change over a period of time which is one hmm. Mm-hmm. and second we as individuals also evolve over a period of time so what i was 10 years back is not what i am today mhm correct true and then what about people who say that i can you know my partner has done something wrong in the past and i can't get over it so this is the other thing what we have discussed till now is more about uh, ongoing conflicts in a relationship where the problem is with understanding it's not mm-hmm. really because you are holding on to a past baggage Mm-hmm. but there are also places where we may be holding on to past baggages and mm-hmm. that's what creates a lot of problems in our life mm-hmm. right now when it comes to past baggages that's the place where i would generally recommend go and visit a therapist that's better mm-hmm. because okay. uh, when it's past baggages mm-hmm. to be objective about those past baggages can be difficult mm-hmm. also at times past baggage may not be related to your current partner it may be because of previous relationships that you were in and because mm. the things did not work out the way you expected them to work out now you are carrying the hangover of it into the current relationship it can Correct. also be because of the you have observed other relationships around you let's say the relationship between your parents mm. and because that did not turn out the way you expected it to they may still be together but you really felt that there was a lot that was missing over there and then you started framing opinions about men and women uh mm. in terms of what your observations were about them mm. then in that case i would recommend that please go and visit a therapist it's far better to deal with it that way okay. apart from that in yesterday's episode we did talk about managing thoughts and emotions right mm-hmm. so if the mm-hmm. idea is that before i go to a therapist what can i do so that i can at least manage myself right now and then eventually i can go to a therapist and get the problem sorted then the mm-hmm. techniques that we have referred to in the previous episode will be mm-hmm. very handy for you mhm okay okay perfect perfect uh nitin i think our time for today is up and we'll have to continue this tomorrow can we do that 
so we will not actually continue this tomorrow because we already have uh, scheduled the talks correct and the topics mm. have already been scheduled mm. accordingly but mm. we will probably do a part 2 of this particular conversation later yes. on uh, yes. maybe around towards the end of this uh, true talk series yes because i have so many questions still to ask you about uh, relationships about acceptance and unconditional love and so on so okay perfect so we'll do everyone who's listening uh, watching us we'll do uh, another episode as a uh, you know a separate episode at the end of the series right nitin correct and if you have any question that we have not answered right now please uh, share those questions with us in the comments uh on either the event page or the icha support foundation video page because mm-hmm. we would then also be able to collate those questions and answer those questions during the next video uh just before we end because you have spoken about all of these things yes. i would i would like to summarize this that eventually most of our problems boil down to our uh, expectations from our mm-hmm. partners and our expectations not being met and mm-hmm. i've been asked this question multiple times that nitin does that mean that we should never have an expectations expectations from our partner mm-hmm. right i don't think that's humanly possible that you don't have any expectation from your partner obviously mm-hmm. because you are living a life together where certain things that you do depend on each other's contribution so some amount that of is- expectation will always be there the thing to keep in mind is it's fine for you to have expectations with your partner but mm-hmm. to have an expectation that your partner will fulfill all your expectation is probably mm-hmm. asking for too much hmm okay? so always keep this in mind that while your partner may not be able to fulfill certain expectations they are mm-hmm. also fulfilling a lot of your expectations so mm-hmm. keep that in mind and that's where what we spoke about in terms of gratitude list earlier in the mm-hmm. second episode and the third episode comes mm-hmm. into play because mm-hmm. you know so yeah just to summarize so for example for me relationships are more like economic transaction mm mm-hmm. sounds very weird but to an extent that's right if we feel that in the relationship i am giving too much and i am mm. receiving less mm then we have a tendency to feel bad we have a tendency to complain mm and when we feel that we are giving less but we are receiving more mm we want to continue being in that relationship mm right and being able to understand your partner better and understand mm. what they are doing from their point of view as a part of the contribution of this relationship Hmm. And maintaining a gratitude list to understand what your partners are actually doing for you hmm. can help you tilt that scale in favor of how much you're receiving in the relationship. Right. Okay. Finally, I am not saying that every relationship needs to work out. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, there are some relationships where you realize that things are not going to work out or they are not working out. But hmm. we will talk about those relationships and how to handle them and the questions related to that. in the follow up uh, episode when we do the next time perfect perfect thank you so much nitin for all those uh, what should i say incredible insights i'm sure everyone uh, you know is going to get a lot out of this episode and of course we are going to have another one at the end of the series and tomorrow's episode is about letting go and forgiveness right nitin it is brilliant because to an extent what we have discussed today in terms of past and past hmm. baggage hmm. uh and also in terms of experiencing hurt and coming to a relationship which may may not hmm. be working out hmm. uh tomorrow's episode will also help you understand how you can move on from your past relationships and hmm. also obviously be able to uh, to handle other challenges that you have in your life perfect perfect so we'll see all of you tomorrow and of course you nitin uh 5:30 pm fb live and meanwhile there are lot of resources that nitin talked about uh you can check out uh, those courses and articles and blogs and videos on the website www.ichars that is ichars.com ichars.com so see you everyone tomorrow yes you saying something see you everyone tomorrow and if you could please share the video if you could just uh inform other people about the true talk series that we are uh, having on a daily basis it would be brilliant also just one addition we have initiated a anxiety support group hmm. uh, for people who may be having anxiety related to uh, covid 19 uh, hmm. these are uh, video meetings that we conduct every monday and thursday 11 to 1 uh, 11 am to 1 pm please hmm. also spread the word about the same because all of these are free initiatives but they can really be helpful for certain people that uh, 
that need it the details about this can be found on the icas foundation website so just search icas foundation it will take you to the relevant website and you will find the different initiatives that we have taken from a covid 19 point of view a lot of these initiatives are free so i'm sure you and other people can benefit from this thank you so much nitin thank you so much for all the resources that you are sharing with us and everything else what you are talking about so see you everyone tomorrow same time fb live 5:30 pm for another episode of true talks bye bye thank you bye bye, bye.